If you look on there, do you see how much water's gone in there? If you look at that centre one. Hold it, it should really like that. New one that I got off eBay for eight quid. So after a good argument with the missus, I was allowed to borrow her hair dryer. Tried it all out, took the, my new one, and I just put it all back. So that cheap fix, guys, saved me two hundred pound on the pump itself, that coolant pump. Hello, <clears throat> just want to make this quick video here. So, I've had some trouble with my Audi and it keeps coming up with a code Audi on um, the coolant bypass valve circuit open. So, circuit open it was this on, it's not a permanent fault, it's like more of a temp fault. So it keeps coming on and off and I keep getting the, the <coughs> OBD light. So researching, researching a lot of things. I've come across a lot of people swap the coolant, part, coolant pipe, the coolant pump, which is expensive. For me. And as this has got auxiliary heating as well, it's got the bypass valve down there. But it's warming up, it closes, all the symptoms are, it's only the light coming on. So before I removed it, I come across, so you want to be, uh, be aware of this, all VW Mark 6 GTI Mark 7s, Audi A4, A5s, A3, all got this pump. So basically, what I found was, if you look on there, do you see how much water's gone in there? If you look at that centre one, you can see water's like almost fuzzed it all out. So that's what seems to, I think, is my issue because intermittent fault. And I've dried it out. What I've done, <coughs> I've ordered a new sensor wire, so I'm just going to replace this and then shove it back in. I've read online a few places where they've swapped that and it sorted the issue. So before you swap the coolant pump, ask your mechanic to have a look at this. It goes underneath the coolant pump. Right on the bottom. The same thing. Which goes. Where my hand is <coughs> underneath. If you see my finger, it goes right there where my finger's going. Just there. And it's this wire here. It is. I've done, it wasn't losing water, thermostat was kicking in, heat's coming out, it's not overheating, and it just come on with a intermittent fault, coolant bypass valve, circuit open. <coughs> the ones that got auxiliary pumps, auxiliary heating, and the people usually swap the back one down there. That one there, but I've touched both pipe hoses and there's warm, warmth coming on. It's kicking in after the car shuts off. So I don't think it's got anything to do with that. But please tune in so I could let you know how it goes after I replace that sensor that's wet. So this one here if you're having the same problem get your mechanic to maybe check this wire out 
thanks for watching. You tune in so I could give you an update on how it went for me. So to take out these wires, I'm just using a little pick and just take some pictures of of um, where the wires need to go back so they don't get confused. Is you press in there. You hold it pressed and then it should, it'll wiggle out like that. And that all came out when you're just pressing these gaps here. We're just replacing this. So here's the one I've taken off. All wet, wet everywhere. And the new one that I got off eBay for eight quid, eight pounds. So I'm just going to take this clip off here, press on these, dry the other one and put it all back in. And that's going to be my easiest method. I don't need to mess around too much. Hopefully the other one will dry out, put a blow dryer on it. And it should do the job. So you don't break this clip. You just pull this tab out till you see the end one come to a stop just there. So after a good argument with the missus, I was allowed to borrow her hair dryer. So I dried out everything down there and I've just put it in and you can see it looks I just swapped over with a sensor <coughs> sensor clip here. I I didn't um cut it or anything, I didn't want to mess around with it, so I just dried out all the dried it all out I removed this tab here and got them all out dried it all out took the, my new one and I just put it all back in so just be careful guys when you go to put it back in see I was confused see the brown and the brown and the green so you gotta remember which brown is brown so there's a brown green wire brown full brown wire see mine that I cut there so I knew that was the second one, the green's the third one, and there's two oranges, so you just gotta know just orange black was the last one going in. Hopefully I got it right, but it looks seems all dry. I've put it in, pulled it back out, it's all dry, it's not wet all around there. I also got a cotton bud and I put it into the hole as well down there. So hopefully just cheap fix will sort the problem out rather than having to pay for a coolant pump, a genuine one, which is like 150 maybe and the label on this is at least good three hours, two hours so hopefully that does the fix. So just want to update you on that coolant pump. 
pipe. I've gone out for a drive and for a good 45 minute drive and there's nothing wrong. The auxiliary pump kicks in, all my heating's fine, no overheating and I'm not getting that fault anymore with a coolant bypass valve control circuit open and I put my hand down there and there's no water nothing no leaks no moisture <coughs> so that cheap fix guys saved me 200 pound on the pump itself that coolant pump and it saved me paying somebody two three hours labor so before you swap that pump i suggest you go ahead and check that wiring for any water and just swap out the plug it saved me a lot of money and I hope it could save somebody else so that's the coolant bypass valve and after you've swapped it over and you <coughs> re-bleed your system with the auxiliary pumps you just have to let it run for 90 seconds with the lid off and after that you, put, you turn it off and then you run it at 2000 rpm let the top hose warm up and the bottom one and then you jump back in the car and you run it at uh, 2000 rpm for another two minutes and take it for a drive and see what happens and it's worked for me so please like and subscribe my video so i could bring you more tips on the audi common issues that one seems to be a fault from the factory so Let's see how it goes, but well, it's worked for me guys. I've tested it two days in a row, so hope it works for you guys too. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.